trying to use the stinks and that proximity to the long of money just to try and find even one hit. Uh, which at this point with such a low ammunition, he's out of stinks now. He still has the three proxy grenade launcher shots. He's kind of burning through resources. I was going to say, he sees those grenades. I was thinking exactly that. Yep. Well, just trying to find a bead at this point. He knows based on the audio. Bug is ready to go back to the corner. He's a little bit tunnel. He didn't tags quite yet. I was a little bit of H mutant stink earlier. Snazy still has the high ground here. Not a ton of materials, 18 builds. At some point, he's going to have to opt to either push this or rotate away. Now, he's trying to rotate away. Must have a push from behind to see here. Oh, wait, wait. Not even hard enough. So never mind. He already has a gold combat number four slot there. See Bug is separating from each other a little bit. Not necessarily pressuring. Early game pressure at game one of six. The World Cup solos would be. Could, could be putting up the evidence. Siphon. Shot. Heavy sniper. Keyboard goes and not quite. Enough. This is just behind us. Snazy sneaks away from the higher floors of that north side building. Lucky. Yeah, Fuga winds up seeing that middle cherry blossom tree get knocked down. And a lot of times in competitive games, players will just hit the trees down to 50 total HP left, but they won't fully remove them from the map because the animation of the tree breaking gives away your position. So if you want to make sure you stay a little bit more hidden in your games at home, only break trees down to 50 total health left and leave them. You'll get a ton of materials, but you'll also still remain as hidden as possible. Benji Fishy, a player with very high expectations for not only himself, but for the community here this weekend. Did play yesterday, I believe, placed 14th with his duo, Mr. Savage. The first stink bomb comes on through, and with that damage, it looks like Benji Fishy wants a fight, but unfortunately does take 50 immediately from the back, and will go ahead and just give up his position for the moment. Frustration on his face, and you can't blame him. Shots as he's attempting to push a little bit on Nate right there. Pleasant Park still inside the safe zone, so moving away from this doesn't have to happen just yet. We'll see. Nate takes an opportunity, rotates all the way across that treehouse building in the southwest corner. Meanwhile, southwest of the entire map, the crew not alone down here. A little bit of a build fight back and forth, and they are not inside the zone. 91 players remain right now, only nine have gone down. It's early in the game, it's gonna stay very, very high in the player count. Crew may be waiting to see if that edit comes through. Doesn't quite. Storm waiting inside. You, we see this all the time. Just holding the edit inside the pyramid. Yep, he doesn't want to step out, potentially get shot. Rotate back down underneath and maybe check his other sides. Meanwhile, King, that wiki in a 1v1. King on the defensive. At this point, he might have the high Oh my gosh, sneaks. The shotgun shot in right before the ramp can go down. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay. Oh, okay. no. And you see King, a little bit of a smirk right there yesterday when we had a little bit of a, maybe I guess you could say trash talk in the game. It was a skeptic who winds up going down to Mongrel Mitro. This time I think King will live to see another fight, but ooh, I like some of this little spiciness to kick off game number one. He wins that fight with a quick wall retake and edit on through. Over to Neo, Tilted, Creo, Hornet, and Clicks currently within a couple buildings of each other. And you see on your screen in the backside, Lechi, Ba, and Mongrel still there as well. Slider Moyes rotating through, looks like on a baller on the backside. Real quick, we'll put the replay up of exactly how that played out. Storm here, stuck inside that box just moments ago. No. Oh. Full send into the air and does catch the shots there. The first SMG proving useful even midair. First SMG, probably not the exact item the players want, but still making use of it. Uh oh, it's a corn fight. Dr. Lupo, you're used to this in Nebraska, as it's right like, now we've got like Rogue Shark. Me, Jack. Yeah, this is, I mean, you've got a ton of skill in this one. As uh, we see Rogue Shark currently dropping down the bandage for the moment. Already the oh. ramp goes through, and Rogue Shark just wasn't ready for it. So if you didn't catch what happened right there, Dr. Lupo, a quick little breakdown. The campfire was placed, he lost control of his wall, but because he had no pyramid inside his box, the opponent placed a ramp and then edited past the ramp for extra cover. It's one of the fastest but most effective ways to take out an opponent when they're inside their one by one. Left eye did just get an elimination. Does use that shockwave to get away from e -Rouse, but solid start as well. And I believe I did just see a fan favorite in Vivid in the elimination feed picking up his first to lift. Storm starting to move. We have 56 seconds. My apologies before the next circle closes. And it is a big crunch to the center of the map. 
might not be able to see in the bottom right there, but folks, it is just northeast center from Neo Tilted. Everyone is going to get pushed together into the city. Let's see here. Dubs. Trying to push from the outside of Flint knocks his opponent to rotate away and Dubs does not want to let them go. 46 back-to-back -back hits and he can't find a bead on Evil Mare. Goes down out here at the old Greasy Grove Ice Lake. And you see Evil Mare with still just in total about 80 HP. Got the 50 back for the elimination. So when you when you calculate it, really only had about 30 health left. So Dub so close, but not able to connect with that final combat shot gun shot. And Dr. Luco, look at this inventory for Riversong for oh. Team Liquid. Six shockwave grenades, two minis, three chug splashes, a launch pad. Weapons a little bit awkward, if I'm gonna be honest. Just a scoped assault rifle and a uh, epic shotgun, but Storm Surge is coming to play, and Dr. Lupa, we haven't really touched on that yet today. Inform the viewers at home as to exactly what this, what this is. So Storm Surge is a mechanic to prevent players from potentially sitting and, and not engaging in fights. If there are a certain number of players at this point, if, when there's over 70, when the circle closes, people are gonna start to take 25 damage every tick, that's every five seconds, yep. unless they are over the threshold for the amount of damage done in the lobby. It's a way to encourage players to get engaged in fights without having to force anybody. You can't really just sit still the entire time. You've got to get engaged, get, get involved with what's going on. And it ends when we reach, when we go below that threshold. Exactly. Bring up this first threshold, you have to drop below 70 players. So Storm Surge will remain in play right now until 69 players as we reach. You see Booga with an elimination, Blaster with one as well. Players above the damage threshold are sitting pretty right now. Players are below the damage They're searching for some damage they can do to try to get themselves in a safe spot. Aqua on your screen, one of the World Cup duo champions from yesterday. Just down side. Of shots inside here. Colorful trying to rotate back away. Doesn't want to quite get caught just yet. Those splashes, by the way, one of the best healing items in the game right now in scrimmages. Headed to Fortnite. An instant throw to 20. And it's HP or shield that will transfer across both. May not be able to get the song, but yet it's going to cancel. Yeah, he did. Oh, he did it? Yep, yep, yep. Current supply pressure on the side. Not a lot of ammunition right now. The inventory only 70 medium rounds for that heavy AR. Not my favorite for spray weapon. Play the tap fire the distance, though. In the dead center of this zone is in the bottom right of your screen. Mr. Savage did just get an elimination down on the muffin. Savage still alive in this one, looking to bounce back from yesterday. I Mr. Savage is too happy with the final performance. Kurtz still, we saw the player piece on him. From this Brazil, trying to rep for his family. Classical elimination there as well on the Twins. And Storm Surge is now active, with the players still above. So people will begin taking damage, and that's a solid chunk with that common tactical shotgun. But another player begins to throw their name into the hat, Doc Kulipo Kurtz. No more shield left, we'll back up the moment. At this point with the circle where it is, we've got 60 seconds before things start to close, and I would say maybe a third of the field is still outside of the next safe zone. You can see a lot of players pushing to Loot Lake. And you have to realize if you're watching at home, if you're here at Arthur Ashe Stadium, competitive Fortnite is very much about late game strategy and positioning. 74 players right now remaining does not surprise us in the, in the slightest, to be honest, especially with how much money is on the line. Harrians goes down. And start picking up that one, but not enough damage dealt. You see the storm surge. Two more players did get eliminated. I think he just got a buff now as players began to drop. So Wakey, Wakey went down to the storm, Skype with an elimination onto Astonish. So we are one player away from the end of storm surge, and there it is as we just hit the threshold. So now no more panic has to come through for these players for the moment. The next one will come into play in a couple more zones as Keenstar right now, the double qualified player from France, currently set on up against Envy's Bucky as they are within a couple boxes of each other. Just to see exactly where things move through here. Just want to hold these edits and look out. No reason to apply too much pressure just yet. He's kind of waiting to see other players that may be around him rotating away, and that's exactly the play. Bucky, by the way, uh, a player that we've seen Competitive qualifiers. He actually spent some time talking to Hogman a lot to refine his gameplay and his drop. We've seen a big improvement since then. Quick shout out to Hogman for helping Bucky out with that one. All the way here, the World Cup solo finals. Will he use one of the campfires in the inventory for 
25 extra health. It depends on the, yet. It depends on the play. If he's looking towards late game, he's going to try and hold on to those for a heal off potentially when this, that final zone starts to close. We'll have to see. A quick reminder, by the way, on the right side of your screen, a victory royale. The win is worth 10 placement points. Those are big. Top five is seven points. Top 15 is five. Top 25 is three points, and every single elimination for these players is an additional point. Here we go, the focus of the current map right now. A lot of players out here on the hill. Northeast side of Neil Tilted, actually a pretty good spot. You have multiple slips nearby while those are still on. You have to remember those do turn off. Sky picking shots, I believe that's on DRG just south. No pressure applied there. He's trying to sneak any shot he can through. Actually, it's challenged. It surprises me. Doesn't go for the build there to protect and get a better spot. Wow, that's and solid damage, though. Just go for it. Solid damage. And what? Look, it's also on the ground. Legendary rifle. Still can swap that when needed. Right now, choosing to go with the spray weapon. This is a player that's close. We have a replay coming on in soon of Mega from FaZe. Yesterday in the duos competition with Dubs. Dubs already dropped this game. We'll see how Mega plays this one. Gets in the opponent's box. Two clean shots. And there it comes through. And near max materials, slurp juice, as well as chug splashes will be sitting pretty with the inventory right there. The next zone did just pop on up, moving to kind of the eastern side of the zone. And what we're seeing right now from Skite is Skite recognizes he's got extra materials back. So he's going to run back, build out a little bit, Grab the excess materials and continue to tunnel with these mats. He's also juggling items over as well to still have the ability to use these whenever he would like to wish to uh, in these next zones. Here's everyone on the map. A rocket being fired on the far side. Bizzle there still on your screen. Commandment. Epic whale. Prison Arrow still boxed up in metal just outside the zone and stopping with one of the more dominant European players in the online qualifier still in this one, but Zane. Zayt was in the lead with Sap yesterday. Five of the six games, but in the end, not able to close it out. As you see, just continuing to spray. Is above the damage threshold. This next threshold of player stock will do 50. So, we're about a minute away before it activates. Bizzle with elimination, though. Down on the Stacey. At this point, too, you have a lot of players. Brunch is going to start to happen. Player count starting to dwindle. The loadout here in Zayt's inventory, a single shadow bomb going to be used for rotation if he has to. Not quite yet, though, he's already in the next safe zone. That heavy sniper rifle we just saw moments ago, and he'll probably go for it again. He's going to knock out a wall and immediately swap to that legendary AR to try and take shots while the wall is gone, while well, the player may not be paying attention. This is a big one right here. Immediate swap, a 69 shield pack, solid crit through the wall. They do box up, but it looks like at that moment he saw the box was being pressured from another player and decided to go for it. Keep in mind, here we go. Keep in mind, no healing for Zayt, so you can see just how cautiously he's taking these fights. Oh, yeah. Also, today in solos, there's no longer the threat, Dr. Lupo, of the double heavy sniper. Sure, we've seen solo players try to use it to their advantage by themselves, but it just is not the same effect. Lol boom, bottom right of your screen, Zayt, top left of your screen, only two late eliminations so far, and here comes Storm Surge for players pushing on in. Not a threat for Lol Boom as he's 409 above, but Karhu did just go down to that Storm Surge, so an unfortunate game number one there. And ooh, some free shockwave grenades to pick up Dr. Lupo will be extremely useful in these rotating zones. And oh man, Lol Boom is eating this stink bomb. 50 damage, Dr. Lupo. Terrible, terrible spot to be in for Lol Boom. Ball move a solo Irishman qualifying for the World Cup here. Gonna have to push on through and try and make his way to the next safe zone. Multiple ballers on the outside. He might be able to grab that one in the water right there if he sees it when he pops out. But we can see Vivid on your screen. Evil Mare still there as well. Saw him rotating in. Multiple ballers still on the field. Look at the, look at the yeah. Oh this is gosh. like this is like a Fortnite. World Cup apartment complex. <laughs> you have countless players stacked in next to each other. Bizzle going for the edit reset. Can't quite catch himself just yet. Muga still making plays happen. A lot of people have him high up on the leaders. And here it is again. Yarkos with the elimination from earlier on. Down on to Aqua, who obviously was our Fortnite World Champion yesterday in duos. Rough start in game number one. Bizzle, one of the most consistent and winningest Fortnite Pro players of all time, Dr. Lupo. 
When you say a veteran in Fortnite competitive, Bizzle is at the top of that list, but here's Yarkos again. Now on the high ground after that first elimination down onto Aqua, looking for more right now as he's got ultimate high. This is one of the best spots in the game right now. We'll have to see where the map is going to rotate in north and northwest, so he's going to have to make a move soon. Very hefty weapon loadout. Not a whole ton of rotation. Does have the two launch pads, does have the redeploy, but those are going to leave you exposed up in the air. A little look back, King. Rotation here. The feet starting to light up. 38 players. Oh, yeah. And that count is going to go down, down, down. Zate eliminated by left eye. Colorful taking up. Another one out as well. King, four eliminations. You have to remember, placement points don't kick in until top 25, so he only has those four. But those are four very, very big points. Here we go. The storm starting to pressure players. You can see a lot, of, a lot of launch pads and redeploys coming to play, and those community movement mechanics like those pads placed on the ground would be tough. A player actually just flew oh. right through ooh, King's ooh, box. That could have been bad, up. Dr. Lupo. That could have been real bad. Him. Maybe a trap play from either player. We'll have to see here. Benji fishing the feet, taking another elimination. Top 35 now. Jacks were coming 30 seconds away from the next circle. And Mr. Savage trying to context. Uh, contest Rux for height as they both continue to build on up. Mr. Sav Savage goes for the shot. Rux gives it up for the moment. So game one right now, the height goes to Mr. Savage, but there's still a ton of time left on the low ground right now. You've got Pika week, class week, Fleddermoy's week, Toozy week as well. Mr. Savage has shot down Rux for the moment. He still continues to keep height. Yarkos, though, looking to challenge right now. 27 players left. Placement points it. about to come into play. Yarkos takes the ultimate high in the backside there. Riverside from Team Liquid flying across right to left of your screen. Multiple players. Ultimate low ground warriors down there, both in and out of ballers. Class looks like he might be Ooh. a campfire in the middle of it. Mr. Savage. King! Rocket. King at seven of limbs! Gosh. And it's made it into placements. King absolutely. The number one performance so far in game one. 120 in total HP. Can he find us a limb? No! As the crowd erupts. Top 20 now, though, but King got the job done. There was 27 players left, Dr. Lugo. King eliminates the last two to make it a top 25 for the placement points. Huge plays there. Wailing going down to the feed. What a shot. A good swap there. Uga showing why he's supposed to have to your feet in the top left, one of the most important things to watch if you're looking for players' names. Here's going to have to wait and bait players out. Moving now, here it is, the Shadow Bomb for rotation. He's still got two more in his inventory, which this late in the game is huge. He does have the three shock with What a monster, the first victory royale. The crowd on their feet. Booga, calm, cool, and collected. Wipes out five of the last top six players for the victory royale. What a sweep.
swing of points right there, Dr. Lupo. You get the win. You get max placement points. Nine of limbs, too, folks. That is a statement game number one for Booga. And here it is again. The shockwave up. Creo tried to prepare. You see the damage coming on through. But at that point, with that much of a health advantage, Creo stands no shot. What a brilliant ending. Talk about a great late game. Solo is absolutely living up to the hype of the duo competition yesterday. Imagine being in the world And instead of opting for a safe, you know, stay down bottom, wait, bait your shot, you throw a shockwave down and you ascend to the high ground, take over and get the victory royale. Much deserved game one victory right there. The, the number one thing I noticed from Puka, in the shadow bombs, so many people worry so much about popping out of the shadow and immediately themselves. Instead, Booga winds up pushing forward, looking for where his next victim could be, and then pops out of the shadow and eliminates the player. It happened three times right there, and it was big reasons why he was able to push on through. Booga, an incredible performance. What is that, 19 points in 19 game number points, one? Game number I, one. I don't see how anyone's above that. At this point, I mean, we're, well, actually, we're going to take a look exactly to see where like I predicted that it. falls on the leaderboards. <laughs> no surprise here, a nine-point lead out of game one. King, seven eliminations. We saw that earlier. Sadly, goes down a little bit before those top couple placements. Psalm, Rux, Yarkos, ton of top tier players across the board right now. So a nine-point lead after game one is absolutely incredible. And you look at the leaderboard right now, a big talk of yesterday, EU versus NA. EU by so quiet earlier in the day. NA by so quiet at the end of the day. Eight of the 10 top players after game one, all from the US. Here's your 11th through 20th place right now. You know, Benji Fishy on there. Evil Mare on there as well. But a, a fantastic start to today. And I'm loving the energy from this crowd at the first ever Fortnite World Cup. They saw how good the competition was yesterday, and I know everyone was so excited to kick it off today with millions watching online. They saw Booga take game number one. He's down to the floor with Jordan Fisher. Booga! Huge, huge first game for the NA player. That's what you want to see. You want a health advantage at the end. Nine E limbs to cap off an incredible first game. What is your thought process going into the final moments of end game? Right, one v one there at the end. You've got health advantage. What are you thinking? Uh, well, I'm pretty much low ground. I have like 200 mats, and I realized that I could probably make a play with the impulse. Just go for it and just like get a big pump on him. Amazing. Well, we saw that happen in real time. An amazing clutch for an end of a first game for Booga. Yo, Jack, Lupo, that is exactly what you want to see, is it not? I mean, I don't think you really ask for much more than that. A victory royale and nine of limbs. The man is so talented, has always been one of the top solo players in the North American region, and he shows it right there in game one, and already a nine-point lead. Solid, solid stuff. What an incredible game out of the game already. One down, we have five left to go. We want to take a look and see exactly how some of those pieces played out, how everything worked, and maybe a, maybe a little bit of a, 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 di a deep dive into, into how some of these players play. So we're going to throw it over to Sundown, Unreal Island, to take a look. Thank you so much, Lupo and Courage. And while Booga was able to dominate the rest of the lobby, I want to take a look at one of the other most marquee and aggressive players we saw. He had the entire lobby saying, Toda salve arre de Argentina. It is king of 9Z with an incredible 70 elimination run in 20th place. Let's take a look at some of this gameplay. So right away, you'll notice, what is he doing? He's his patent is going forward, wall replace, on land 123 that's going to be the theme of these clips he doesn't miss his shot and he's not afraid to flex either throwing the donkey laugh out there throwing him a little love saying i don't care who you are now he's sitting on the four elims he's in the box fight and he's constantly looking to pick up new targets replaces the wall from the side turns around and picks up a great elimination there onto bucky in the rotation but now watch on the spree zone five elims right now cones himself off look at this the player challenges him he's not building he's going at him he says if you want to fight 
fight me. I shoot first. I am the king. Was able to go, but unfortunately gets caught there in the rotation. But still, a brilliant performance from the young Argentinian. He's looking to challenge. He's looking to frag out with the best of the best, putting himself currently sitting in the number two spot. He has played so absurdly well in that first game. This is what it's all about. If you can bring your aggression, what you do in the qualifiers and take it to this stage and you don't have nerves. If you're like Booga and say, I'm gonna go. If you're like King and say, you wanna edit, I'll shoot first. I'll take the 50 uh, health on Elam there and I will take the point in staying in the match. You can wait and watch me dominate. Let's get into match two because that first match was insane. Courage and Lupo, take it away, guys. Sundown, thank you so much. Appreciate it. The quick analysis of everything that happened in the middle of that game. A lot of action here at the Fortnite World Cup solo competition. This is the last day for the entire event as well. I hope everyone has enjoyed Marshmallow's concert. We have tons of people here in the crowd. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just, it's just been ridiculous. So much fun. My, my Italian family was out there. 25 people deep. They've got a full deli layout. Unfortunately, my Aunt Lorraine down in Florida, I know you're watching. Shout out, we love you, miss you. But no, they're all here for their first ever event too. It is uh, an incredible energy in here. And you know, guys in the venue, I, I, uh, do you guys want to see another Fortnite World Cup next year? Should we do this again? I'm thinking, yeah, Jay. All right, budget's approved, Epic, it's happening. But folks, let's get back into the action. Game number two, about to begin. Booga, the superstar of game one, the talk on all social media with the hashtag Fortnite World Cup. What a play. The lobby is ready. The players are ready. Ladies and gentlemen in the venue, are you ready? Game two of the Solos competition here at the Fortnite World Cup Finals starts right now. After the last game, I have a feeling you're going to see maybe potentially more uh, contested drops and have players vying for those points, seeing exactly what can be done now. Booga bringing home nine eliminations in that first game. I think the next two closest were 7-4, and then everybody was below that. The Arcos, I think, having four, King with seven. Going into game two, yeah. Yep. Knowing that we still have five remaining. Knowing that based on the leaderboards from yesterday, that 17 points at one point separated first and last. And by the way, a quick note, we can see the minimap, but I think Tifu, yeah, there it is. There it is. I'm pretty sure Tifu has the block all by himself. No Again, one clip note didn't want to challenge it this time. No one nearby at all. And also on that map, look at the two llamas. Right, right outside a racetrack. It looks like one player is about to go claim him. Also, Bizzle, who basically lands in Dusty Divot uncontested, I believe already got a llama in this one. So, some great movement will be uh, uh, up there for them. Here again, the stats for last match. First place, the Victory Royale, 19 total points because of those nine of limbs. Sitting pretty, five games away from three million dollars. I have to say, I feel like after one game, seeing an average placement stat of first, that's something I would screenshot just to, just to hold on to. <laughs> yeah, the best well, player in the I was, world. See? I average first through all the games that have been played. Here is Aqua versus Twins Aqua, as we can't stress enough. Our Fortnite World Champion from yesterday in duos. Only with a common SMG is Twins and Ups being missed left and right from Aqua. And I'm going to tell you right now, Aqua's going to be upset with himself on that one, Dr. Lupo. That was a sloppy fight from both sides. I'm going to say it right now. Those early game fights can be very, very awkward, but we also have the first elimination from what we oh saw earlier. Gosh. And it was Bizzle with the common pistol and then says, here's your reward. A llama that was looking at a nice view from the top of Dusty Divot. Kovacs out of his mind. By the way, a quick note here. Twins had 46 elims in his qualifying matches. That was so many eliminations to get to this point. Yeah. Over 10 games. It's That's huge. And most players didn't even get to play the full 10, so you got to think Twins did pop off in his region when Ooh, it was going on right through. there. Yep. Two Shadow Bombs already has a Flint Knock sitting on minis and a pump. Solid early game loadout. Can he pick up maybe one more movement ability, depending on whether or not he wants to keep the Flint Knock in his inventory. We'll have to see. Still hopefully looking for a slurp at some point. MQ and Mr. Savage not far from each other. Takamura, Clarity G also in Happy Hamlet, my least favorite drop, I'm gonna be honest with you, but a lot of these players know exactly where the chests are, they know exactly how to get there as fast as they can, and there are so many materials down here, 
It's also is one of the highest chest spawn counts in the entire game. This, this, this POI is insane. Yeah, I believe 29 possible chests or something along those lines, but as uh, MQ says, you know what, let me let me roll away for right now. Give that to Mr. Savage. Over to Snobby Shores, they spawn it. Spray down with that heavy assault rifle. Only 19 AR shots left, Doc Blue folks, so we'll have to use them wisely here. Eight players have dropped so far in the zone. More of a southwestern side zone on this one, so already some good variation between the zones in game one and game two. We're going to continue slowly but surely over to Nyx. Once again, looking at the map. Looks like a lot of players still outside the zone, as you'd expect, but they'll begin to rotate on through as the first storm will close. Good point. Plenty of time to make decisions. Force engagement there. The tree disappears, and that drum shotgun spewing shells out. Going to push inside the box. Can't quite get the wall if the trap was placed. No luck there. Doesn't have one in the inventory. Nyx still trying to apply as much pressure as possible. Without having to chew through too many rounds. Reload here, the drum shotgun. So much damage dealt with this thing so far. Wouldn't be surprised if he goes in for it here in just a second. And he does, watching that corner. Hornet still on the defensive. Long range spray from a drum shotgun isn't enough. But up close, the thing oh. is very, very deadly. Nix picking up first elimination for him in this game. Also with the emote after the eliminations. That's two so far. This is spicy. Jack, you, 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 you love it. I mean, it. I love this. You love it. I get like. A very uh, important note there. Nix had the most eliminations in the online opens at 61 yeah. during his qualifying week. That's crazy, too. And Nix from Brazil. Brazil often, we often saw very aggressive.